There's been a major break in the Amber Spradlin murder cover-up that took place last year on June 18th. Amber Spradlin was stabbed 11 times in the home of Dr. Michael McKinney on June 18th, 2023. She was stabbed at least 11 times in her head, her neck, and her throat. Present in the home at the time was his son, Michael McKinney Jr., and Roy Kidd, Amber Spradlin's lifelong friend. Tonight, Kentucky State Police announced a switch in that investigation. Her death is no longer considered possibly suspicious. With the latest evidence, it's now believed she was murdered. We know that there was a 911 call that came in the middle of the night that was ignored by dispatch. It was placed by Michael McKinney Jr., who was saying there is a drunk guy in the house, he's bleeding. The dispatcher was trying to get clarification. Is he threatening people? Like, what's going on? And the kid was like, no, no, he's just drunk. Can you get him out of here? And Michael McKinney Sr. took the phone and was like, um, these people are just drunk. It's all under control. No need to send anybody out. Four hours later, another 911 call comes in from Michael McKinney Sr. saying Amber Spradlin was found stabbed to death in his home. When first responders arrived, they noticed that security cameras had been taken down and that Michael McKinney Jr. was no longer at the house. Prior to calling 911, Michael McKinney Sr. made three phone calls to prominent figures in Floyd County. Was it to see what kind of help he could get? for having a murdered girl in his home? I mean, maybe? So Amber Spradlin works at the Brickhouse restaurant, which Michael McKinney Sr. was part owner. Roy Kidd met her that night when she got out of work, and they went over to the Seasons Inn, which is owned by Michael McKinney's brother. Once at the Seasons Inn, they met up with Michael McKinney Jr. People at the bar said that Roy Kidd and Michael McKinney Jr. were extremely intoxicated, legless. Somehow, the three of them made it back to Michael McKinney Sr.'s home. Now, there are rumors that Roy Kidd is Michael McKinney Sr.'s little boy toy on the side. McKinney Sr. was allegedly at the home and gave McKinney Jr. and Kidd, quote, additional intoxicating substances. But, um, nothing really adds up in this case. We know that they turned over their phones to investigators. Uh, the father and son both had their phones scrubbed prior to turning them over. The father and son are not answering any questions. They refuse to answer any questions about that night. Um, it was said originally that Roy Kidd was cooperating, but now it seems that none of them are talking. Nobody's talking. And investigators are saying that they need to wait for DNA before they can do anything. Nothing's being done about it, and it's just enough is enough, and it's time for it to stop. And when pressed about the DNA, they said in Kentucky, um, they have a backup, a backlog of DNA, and it could take up to three years to process that DNA. Um, what kind of third world country are we living in here? So the break in the case came last week when a lawsuit was filed on the behalf of Amber Spradlin's estate, naming a whole bunch of prominent figures, law enforcement, the McKinney's, as defendants in this lawsuit. In the lawsuit, it calls out Michael McKinney Jr as the suspected murderer. The lawsuit alleges that Michael McKinney Jr. stabbed Amber Spradlin 11 times in the face, the neck, the throat, and in the skull where the knife tip was broken off. The lawsuit goes on to allege that the 911 call that was originally made would have saved Amber Spradlin's life if law enforcement had responded to it. They allege that the crime scene was cleaned, that evidence was destroyed and tampered with, and they are claiming that law enforcement was part of it. Now take a look at this. This is a list of all the defendants in the case. And I reached out to as many as I could Tuesday evening. And they just live in that home like nothing ever happened. My God. And so I've never seen anything like this where law enforcement refused to take any action on a crime, you know, claiming they don't have enough evidence, they don't have enough probable cause, but they have probable cause. A murder happened inside that home they have probable cause to arrest that person that tampered with the evidence. Former Mayor Les Stapleton, and he says he's not going to speak with us until he talks with his attorney. As of Tuesday night, Kentucky State Police still hasn't released any new updates and no arrests have been made. So it's gonna be interesting to see what comes out of this. This lawsuit is gonna get the case some attention. They are pointing the finger directly at the suspect that they believe killed Amber Spradlin. Amber's name must be in every one of our mouths every day until somebody is locked up. 
And this lawsuit might get the attention needed on this case so that there is justice for Amber Spradlin.